Chapter 6 Ace the Cost Optimization Pillar Introduction For a busy person who may not have time to go through the hundreds of pages of the well-architected framework, this guide serves as an abstract of the cost optimization pillar of the well-architected framework. Understanding the cost optimization pillar will ensure that you are equipped with the knowledge of the best practices for achieving cost efficiency which you should implement on your workloads in the cloud. The Cost Optimization Pillar One of the things which has been least well understood is customers transition into cloud around cost optimization. One of the challenges in the past was that people building the systems be programmers, or architectures rarely had the access to the cost of the components that they are using to build those systems. They were using servers and using databases, but never exposed to the cost for those components. And with the cloud, this is changing and getting more and more engineers being aware about costs of the components rather than just the finance guys. The cost optimization pillar seeks to empower you to maximize value from your investments, improve forecasting accuracy and cost predictability, create a culture of ownership and cost transparency, and continuously measure your optimization status. Let's get started. Components As any of the pillars of the well-architected framework, the cost optimization pillar also covers the following two broad areas. Design principles, definitions. Design principles. Following the various design principles highlighted in this pillar can help you with securing your applications. One. Implement cloud financial management. In order to become a cost efficient organization, you need to invest in cloud financial management by having a program which implements having dedicated resources and processes in place for cost optimization. 2. Adopt a consumption model. Depending upon your workload requirement, you need to implement the resource usages. By automatically stopping resources which are not in use, you can easily save on 75% of the costs. 3. Measure overall efficiency. You need to measure the impact of business outcomes like revenue, customer gains, etc., against the input cost of running your workloads. This helps you understand the impact of increase in cost for your business goals. 4. Stop spending money on undifferentiated heavy lifting. Your focus should be on customers or business projects which help you achieve your organization goals rather than building IT infrastructure, which can be taken care of by making use of cloud. 5. Analyze and attribute expenditure. By properly tagging your resources, you can identify the cost per project, workload, or department. This helps establish the ROI on your business efforts and accordingly create a room for optimization. Definitions AWS outlined five focus areas that encompass cost optimization in the cloud. Practice cloud financial management, expenditure and usage awareness, cost-effective resources, manage demand and supplying resources, optimize over time. Let's go into the details of each of them to understand them better, and how we can use them to optimize costs in our cloud environment. Practice Cloud Financial Management Cloud financial management answers the how of cost optimization. This defines the change in entire culture of your organization as it moves to cloud or seeks optimization to realize business value and financial success. It involves the following best practices. Functional Ownership you need to establish a cost optimization function. This function will be responsible for establishing and maintaining a culture of cost awareness. Depending on the organization's size, it can be an individual or a team with a diverse set of skill sets ranging from project management, financial analysis, to software development. An executive sponsorship ensures support for well-functioning of the responsibilities and helps in defining organizational goals for cost optimization in the cloud. Finance and Technology Partnership As compared to the traditional data centers-based environments, technology teams innovate faster in the cloud due to the reduced time for approval, procurement, 
and infrastructure deployment cycles. This needs you to establish a partnership between finance and technology teams. The two most relevant teams that should be involved in regular discussion in your cloud journey are financial leads. The CFOs, commercial and account managers, should understand the cloud model of consumption and purchasing. Since there is a shift in billing to pay as you go pricing from a fixed pricing in the on prem operations, it is essential that financial organizations understand how the usage of their cloud resources impacts the cost occurred to the business. Technology leads. Similarly, the product and technology leads should understand the budgets and service level agreements. These financial requirements should be kept in mind while designing cloud-based workloads for your business applications. This partnership helps both the teams have real-time visibility into costs and also establish a standard operating procedure to handle variance in cloud spending. Additionally, business unit owners and third parties should understand the cloud business model so that they are aligned with the financial goals and work towards optimal return of investments, ROI. Cloud Budgets and Forecasts The efficiency, speed, and agility offered by cloud means there can be high variable amount of cost and usage. You can use AWS Cost Explorer to forecast daily or monthly cloud costs based on your historical cost trends. Your existing budgeting and forecasting processes should be modified to take inputs from AWS Cost Explorer to identify trends and business drivers. Cost-aware processes. 5. Implement cost awareness in your organizational processes. Cost awareness must be implemented in all new and existing processes in your organization. This includes change management. Changes to your workloads or infrastructure should quantify the financial impact. Operations management. Your existing incident management process should be modified to identify the root causes for variance, increase, and decrease of the cost of running your workloads. Automation. By investing in automation and tooling, your organization can accelerate cost savings and business value realization. Training and development. Continuous training and certification of various stakeholders in your organization by including cost awareness topics helps build a workforce which is capable of self-managing costs and usage. 6. Report and notify on cost and usage optimization. By using AWS Cost Explorer and AWS Budgets, you can regularly report cost and usage optimization within your organization. This should not be limited to the management or financial teams, but should be extended to all the stakeholders, including technology teams. You can further customize reports with the Cost and Usage Report, C-U-R, data with Amazon Quick Sight, which can help create reports according to target audiences. 7. Monitor cost and usage proactively. Rather than investigating for anomalies, you should have proactive monitoring of cost and usage. You can make use of Dashboard, which can be made accessible to everyone for aware of organizations' focus on cost optimization. Cost Aware Culture By starting with small changes, you can create an environment which is aware of cost of achieving your business goals. This can be in the form of dashboards, rewarding of teams working on cost efficiency, or having top-down goals with predefined goals. You can also get your stakeholders to subscribe to AWS News and Cost Management blog to make them aware of new services and best practices which can help in increasing cost efficiency of your workload. Quantify business value delivered through cost optimization. When you terminate idle EC2 instances or delete unattached EBS volumes, you can quantify AWS spending through the cost reductions. Similarly, you can quantify business values from all kinds of optimization. Expenditure and Usage Awareness in order to make informed decisions about where to allocate resources within your organization and also understand how profitable various business units and products are, 
it is essential to understand the organization's costs and drivers for expenditures. Some of the key factors to consider in the efforts to generate awareness for usage and expenditure are 1. Governance. High level guidelines for managing cloud usage should be established. These can be established using the following governance areas. Develop organizational policies. You need to develop policies related to creating resources and workloads for various units and teams. Some examples include establishing AWS regions in which resources should be run, determining the storage class to be used for production versus development teams, and maximum instance sizes, which can be used for test slash dev accounts. Develop goals and targets. We expect our developers and builders to drive the cost of the resources cheaper and workloads more efficiently. However, this may not be a part of their job description. In order to set the expectations right, the DevOps team role descriptions should also have goals and targets in place to make the workloads more efficient. Account structure. By levering AWS organizations and consolidated billings, you can set up a master account and run workloads in member accounts. This can help you set up service limits for member accounts running specific workloads and also monitor cost and usage by these groups. Organizational groups and roles. Once the organizational policies are set, you can create various IAM groups and roles. Depending on job roles, such as system admin, IT, or financial department, individual users may be assigned these groups who do similar tasks. Your group policies will define what tasks these users are allowed to execute and have guardrails in place for cross-account access. Controls, notifications. You can make use of AWS budgets to define a monthly budget for your AWS costs and combine it with commitment discounts. The budgets can be even set at granular levels, such as tags, availability zones, or services. Email notifications using SNS can be triggered based on current or forecasted costs in case usage exceeds a predefined threshold. Controls Enforcement AWS Organization's Service Control Policies, SCPs, allow you to enforce governance policies, which you can set for member accounts in your organization. These establish the maximum available permissions for these accounts in order to enforce them to stay within the control guidelines. Within accounts, you can make use of IAM policies at group or user level to control who can create and manage certain AWS resources. Controls Service Quotas By understanding your resource requirements and project progress, you can set up service quotas which determine the number of resources which can be created. You can increase or decrease service quotas as per demand and, at the same time, stay within your budgeted limits. Track Workload Lifecycle You need to know when a particular workload or its resources are no longer needed, and they can be decommissioned or passed on to other teams. This can be done by managing an inventory using AWS Systems Manager and track the lifecycle of various resources. 2. Monitoring Cost and Usage It can't be emphasized more that by providing detailed visibility into cost and usage to teams, they can take action to make their workloads more efficient. The following areas are the most important areas. Configure Detailed Data Sources You can enable hourly granularity in Cost Explorer and create a Cost and Usage Report, CUR, to get the most accurate view of cost and usage in your entire organization. You can customize your CUR to include resource IDs, versioning, and integrate the data with Athena to perform data analysis. Identify cost attribution categories. During the various stages of a workload lifecycle, such as developing, testing, production, and decommissioning, you must allocate cost to them. Further, different accounts can be created for learning and staff development in order to segregate costs rather than attributing them to general IT costs. Establish workload metrics. 
you need to determine how a workload output impacts performance and, in turn, business success. This helps in determining the workload efficiency and, in turn, the cost for each business output. Assign organization meaning to cost and usage. By assigning a tag to each resource, such as an EC2 instance or an S3 bucket, you can use this information in cost and usage reports to relate them to a meaningful organizational information. Tags can be of relevant categories such as cost centers, application names, projects, and owners. Even without tags, with the help of AWS cost categories, you can assign the organizational meaning to these costs. It allows you to map the cost and usage to internal organizational structure. Configure billing and cost optimization tools. You need to set up tooling which configures reports, notifications, current state of workloads, trends and forecast, tracking and analysis for all your workloads and teams. Tools such as AWS Cost Explorer, AWS Budgets, Amazon Athena, and QuickSight provide these capabilities. Allocate costs based on workloads metrics. You can determine workload metrics such that their running time, i.e., continuous versus periodic, or based on changes in transaction patterns, and accordingly see their impact on cost. This helps you focus on optimization activities to meet further business needs. 3. Decommissioning Resources An important part of a workload is the ability to decommission resources in a timely manner. This can be achieved by the following practices. Track resources over their lifetime. You can track resources by applying tags and maintaining an inventory using Systems Manager. A simple example would be tagging all the testing resources and monitoring their usage. Implement a decommissioning process. A standard process which determines scanning unused resources and timely decommissioning should be established. Decommission resources. Various factors for motivation towards decommissioning resources should be determined. This should include the potential cost savings, efforts required, state change of workload, and change in market conditions or product termination. Decommission resources automatically. Dynamic resources can be automatically terminated by using auto-scaling and setting up workload-specific scale-down policies. You can also make use of custom code and CloudWatch event bridge to automatically trigger execution of code to decommission workload resources automatically. Cost-effective resources. With cloud, you might be doing 10 times what you used to do and achieving the outcomes accordingly. It becomes necessary to choose appropriate resources, services, and configuration for your workload to achieve cost savings. The following aspects should be considered. 1. Evaluate cost when selecting services. Identify organization requirements. You should maintain a balance between cost and other well-architected pillars such as performance and reliability. Based on a combined consideration, you would architect a workload which may not necessarily have the lowest cost, but a more efficient environment. Analyze all workload components. You should not only analyze the large items contributing to the workloads, but each individual component such as storage, metrics, and data transfer should be looked into to determine their current and future impact. For example, using VPC endpoints instead of NAT Gateway for S3 data transfer can have a huge impact on your NAT Gateway billing. Managed Services AWS Managed Services reduce the operational overhead of provisioning infrastructure, managing patches, and compliance. Services such as RDS, Redshift, EMR, and Elasticsearch can help you in a faster life and shift from your on-premises to the cloud while taking the burden of provisioning all the resources. Serverless or application-level services. Serverless applications such as Lambda, SNS, SQS, and SES remove the need to manage dedicated resources. 
You can benefit from the benefit of pay only for the workloads and automatically scale up for performance. Analyze the workload for different usage over time. You need to review your workloads at a determined frequency and evaluate against new AWS service offerings. By having such a process, you can determine the impact of using different services with your workloads on both cost as well as performance efficiency. Licensing costs. There have been changes in the industry and organizations have seen their cost towards shift in SAAS offerings. Instead of buying a software license and installing it, teams can now make use of SAAS offerings and consume applications according to their requirements. With the ability to customize more and more complex environments in the cloud, organizations can also evaluate open source applications. This not only drastically reduces cost, but also enables business units to customize due to agility offered by cloud. 2. Select the correct resource type, size, and number. By selecting the right type of resource based on type, size, and numbers, you can meet the technical requirements based on lowest cost resource. You can consider the following approaches. Cost modeling. You can test your workload performance under various load conditions and determine the right size of resources required to run them. For running workloads, you can make use of AWS Cost Optimizer, which can help in cost modeling based on historical costs. Additional CloudWatch logs and metrics can be used as data sources for other custom workloads and services. Metrics or database selection. Based on the cost modeling, you can come up with a database approach to select your resources with the right amount of compute, memory, and throughput. Automatic selection based on metrics. You can also make use of AWS services such as auto-scaling to automatically select the right cluster size for your workload based on metrics. Similarly, S3 Intelligent Tiering can be used to automatically move data between various storage tiers based on access patterns of your stored objects. 3. Select the best pricing model. Perform workload cost modeling. Based on your workload requirement, you can figure out the potential pricing models. Some factors to consider are availability, time-based load, or if independent resources are being used to run the workloads. Perform regular account level analysis. You can also check if your workloads are mostly on demand. In that case, you can consider implementing a commitment-based discount. This analysis has to be done for a period ranging from a week to a few months. Pricing models. AWS offers multiple pricing models that allow you to pay for your resources in the most cost-effective way that suits your organization's needs. Here are the current pricing models available. On demand. This is the default pricing model where you pay for your resources as you consume them. You can increase or decrease your resource capacity, such as EC2 instance or DynamoDB on demand. This model is suited for medium-term workloads, a few months, which have unpredictable utilization. Spot. You can use the unused EC2 capacity offered by AWS at discounts of up to 90% as compared to on-demand instances, and there is no long-term commitment required. This is usually suitable for non-critical workloads, which do not need a specific time to run. You should set the maximum pricing as the on-demand pricing and be flexible about the availability zones where the workloads will run to fulfill your target capacity and get maximum benefits. Additionally, you can keep your fleet as a combination of on-demand and spot instance to ensure a minimum capacity is always available to run your workloads. Commitment Discounts Savings Plans If you have a workload which needs to run for a longer duration, you can sign up for a savings plan allowing you to make an hourly spend commitment for one or three years. This can be used with services such as EC2, Fargate, and Lambda. This can provide you a discount rate which is applied on the on-demand costs with flexible payment options such as upfront, partial upfront, or 
no upfront. Commitment Discounts Reserved Instances Instead of hourly spend commitment, Reserved Instance needs you to commit to a specific amount of resource utilization. There are also options for convertible Reserved Instances through which you can change the instance family, tenancy, and operating systems of your committed EC2 resources. EC2 Fleet you can specify a target compute capacity and specify the instance types through EC2 Fleet, which will balance the on-demand and spot instance to meet your fleet requirements. Geographical Selection While the first criteria you should consider while selecting a region is the closeness to the region, in case of multiple options, you should check the service pricing for each of them to get the lowest possible pricing. AWS Simple Monthly Calculator can be used to estimate costs across various regions. Third-Party Agreements and Pricing When you use third-party software with your cloud workloads, you should consider if they align with your cost optimization goals. There would be software where the licensing costs increase with increase in workloads. You should evaluate if the increased costs also have an impact on workload performance. 4. Plan for Data Transfer Data transfer is one of the most undermined cloud cost components and usually ignored. However, it can play a big role achieving your savings objectives if you plan to optimize it. Perform Data Transfer Modeling You need to understand where the data transfer happens in your environment and identify the cost associated with it. Factors such as interavailability zone data transfers should be considered to evaluate if the workloads can be optimized to achieve a certain balance between resiliency and cost. Optimize data transfer. There are various ways in which you can optimize the transfer of data within your workload and to your users. Content delivery networks take your data closer to the users and reduce the associated transfer costs to serve them. Similarly, for high traffic patterns, it may be better to have separate NAT gateways in each AZ to avoid data transfer cost and achieve resiliency. Select services to reduce data transfer costs. You can make use of dedicated Direct Connect link to reduce the data transfer cost over the Internet and also get a consistent performance over connectivity. For data transfer between VPC and S3, or DynamoDB, Instead of using NAT gateways, you can consider using VPC endpoints, which reduce public data transfer cost as well as NAT gateway processing charges. Manage demand and supplying resources. Since cloud offers you the pay-as-you-go model, you can eliminate the need for costly as wasteful over-provisioning. With on-demand provisioning of resources, you can ensure that you have resources running only when you need them and scale up or down when required. You can use the following approaches to manage demand and supplying resources. 1. Analyze the workload. You need to analyze the predictability and repeatability of your workload resource demand. This should also consider the change of demand and acceptable minimum and maximum delay in case of failures. By making use of AWS Cost Explorer and QuickSight, along with CUR, you can perform a visual analysis of your workload demand. 2. Manage Demand Throttling For the workloads which have a retry capability, you can implement throttling. This allows the source to wait for a certain period of time and retry the request and in turn allows you to minimize simultaneous usage of your resources thus optimizing costs associated to run them. Buffer-based A buffer-based mechanism can be implemented by using a queue to accept messages from various producers and then getting the consumers to process them. Amazon SQS allows you to implement a buffering approach by running the work items, messages, that is acceptable by the consumer's processing and reduces the overall load of demand by producers. With Amazon Kinesis, you can have a stream which allows the messages to be consumed by multiple clients at the same time. 3. Dynamic Supply Demand-Based Supply When there is a spike in traffic or increase in a resource utilization, 
you can make use of various services to programmatically scale your architectural components. You can monitor the resource workload using CloudWatch metrics and accordingly have scaling policies in place to provision additional resources. Time-based supply. If you have a demand that is predictable and well-defined by time, then you should consider the time-based approach. An example of this would be processing of business reports at the end of the day. Since it falls at the specific time, you can make use of auto-scaling scheduled scaling to spin up resources at the particular time and terminate them once the job is done. You can also make use of CloudWatch event bridge and schedule cron job to trigger Lambda functions which provision custom resources at a predefined time. Optimize over time. It is important to optimize over time by reviewing new service offerings and changes to your requirements. Consider the following to have a consistent optimization based environment. 1. Develop a workload review process. You must establish a process to review your workload periodically to ensure that your architectural decisions remain cost effective over time. As your business grows, you may have outdated or legacy components which may need updating or revesting in terms of their contribution to the overall costs. For example, your initial architecture may have individual small databases which have duplicate data over time. You may consider using a central database which serves different parts of your workloads. In order to have an optimal review process, you may review the workloads which contribute to 50% of your overall costs more frequently than the ones which contribute less than 5%. Two, review the workload and implement services. As new services and features are released, your review process should consider implementing them after analyzing the business impact of making the changes. There are various AWS blog posts channels which your teams can subscribe to in order to be up to date with the latest offerings. Review based on cost optimization pillar. Some of the questions which you will be going through when you review your workload against the security pillar of the well-architected framework are COST1, how do you implement cloud financial management? COST2, how do you govern usage? COST3, how do you monitor usage and cost? COST4, how do you decommission resources? COST5, how do you evaluate cost when you select services? COST 6, how do you meet cost targets when you select resource type, size, and number? COST 7, how do you use pricing models to reduce cost? COST 8, how do you plan for data transfer charges? COST 9, how do you manage demand and supply resources? COST 10, how do you evaluate new services? The answers to these questions during the review help you identify any gaps in your existing workloads and implement the best practices in your AWS environment.